genitourinary is going to obviously be different in male and female. Um, most of the time the uh, scribe will not be present for those exams, but it depends. Sometimes then he may be present if a rectal exam is being done. Um, pelvic exams are usually delayed and you'll usually just get the report on that later. For the male, there will be an exam of the genitalia and potentially the rectal exam. You will hear terms such as circumcised, uncircumcised, lesions that might be present, um, the, uh, where the urine comes out at the tip of the penis that is called the urethral meatus. The urethra runs from the bladder to the outside world. It's short in females, longer in males, obviously but where that um, exits is the urethral meatus. So you may hear about a discharge or no discharge from the urethral meatus. The glands is the distal portion, distal being furthest away from the body, distal portion of the uh, penis, so you may have descriptors there. And then there are the testicles, and they could be normal sized, they could be enlarged, they could be swollen, uh, and you may have a description of tenderness to the testicle or to the epididymis, which are the tubes behind, and that would indicate an infection there called epididymitis, or of the testicles themselves, that would be an orchitis. In a male, on the rectal exam, uh, you'll be checking, as with a female, for blood, and you will learn about uh, hemocult cards. Those are cards where a little specimen of stool is placed on it, and you test for what we call occult blood. Occult blood being, it's not obvious bleeding, but there's some blood in the stool so that when you do a chemical test, it turns blue and that's called a positive uh, test for occult blood. Uh, but in the male, you also are checking for prostate size and you may uh, have soft, tender, nodular, um, non-tender, enlarged, various terms like that to describe the prostate. In the female, of course, it would be a pelvic exam that they would have. And on the pelvic exam, you will uh, probably have a description of two parts of the exam. The first part is called the speculum exam, and that's when the, the plastic speculum that opens up so the uh, internal organs can be visualized a little bit. Uh, that will be part number one, and you may hear terms such as um, lesions, uh, vaginal discharge with description of the discharge. You may hear uh, something about the cervical os, that's the opening of the cervix, and which is at the end of the uterus. After the speculum exam is what we call a bimanual exam, and that's where the physician is feeling the uterine size, and what we call the adnexa, the two areas next to the uterus that house the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. So you will get a description of uterine size. You may have a description of whether it's tender or not, whether it's regular or irregular, if there's a mass palpated. Same with the ovaries. Are they tender or are they non-tender? Are they enlarged? Is there a mass? The physician also does a little wiggling of the cervix, which moves the whole uterus and that is described as cervical motion, and they will say yes or no, there is cervical motion tenderness. In extreme pain with that, it has a, an unusual name. It's called the chandelier sign, uh, because the patient hits the chandelier when you do that, uh, which might happen in an infection. You may also get a description in the pregnant patient of uterine size, even on the abdominal exam, and they may say how far up the, the fundus, or the top of the uterus, is as compared to the umbilicus, which is the navel. And uh, pregnancies are 40 weeks, and that goes up pretty much, fills up the abdominal cavity. At 20 weeks is when the uterine fundus is at the umbilicus.